Happy Arvo. Thank you for joining me today. Guys, we need to address something. There's this guy that's been brought to my attention, Tyler, who seems to be copying a lot of my style. His thumbnails look similar. He even looks like me. I reached out to him. It turns out we're twin brothers. And so we decided to start a YouTube channel together. <laughs> some of you guys have been commenting about Tyler for a long time. So I hope this is like a crazy revelation for some of you. You guys are like, what? Anyway, uh, first video we did was watching this video about Tinder in real life, which is pretty funny. Uh, that link is, of course, in the description. Check it out if you think that sounds fun. If not, you know, don't worry about it. But if that sounds interesting to you, please go subscribe. Check out the channel. I would appreciate it. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, but for real, guys, today we have six-year-old Quincy Simmons, a.k.a. the Flying Squirrel. A six-year-old surfer in Australia. That sounds absolutely crazy. So I'm just, I saw this, I had to watch. The Flying Squirrel. I started surfing when I was four. <laughs> oh, she's waxing her board. Most kids doing that, you'd think they're like drawing with chalk. She's like, no, I'm waxing my board, bro. It feels like it's like one Look how in, small the board is. The cat's more and stuff. What'd she say? Like it's like one in you, the cat's more and stuff. My name's Quincy Simons, and they call me the Flying Squirrel. Is that her? How bad would you, that make you feel? If you were like me, like a 30 year old man out there trying to surf. I would be so proud of myself if I got anywhere near this level of surfing. And then to see a six year old girl just like come, make way coming through. Plowing past me, man. I can only imagine. Half these dudes are just going to go home right now. The waves are nuts in Australia. We just returned home from living in America and we came up to Surface Paradise for a um, holiday. Jake was getting up very early in the morning um, to go surfing down at Snapper and she asked me where her daddy was in the mornings and I said that he was surfing. Quincy being as stubborn as she can be, stood at the door for 45 minutes waiting for her dad to come home and said, Daddy, I'm going to come surfing with you tomorrow. And he said, OK, do you know what surfing is? <laughs> and she said, no, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. I, what a proud dad. I can only imagine. How cool would that be? <laughs> Holy, she's insane. The very first time I saw her out in the ocean, she she changed. She she became a complete person. I'm amazed by it. I'm really proud of it. But yep, to be honest, like... I, I can't comprehend how she does it. <laughs> how she's, she's better than me. Done it so quickly. She's probably close <laughs> to the best six-year-old skater and surfer in the world right now. Wow, in the world. So she skates too. Music is uh, over the top, but I like it. That's so hot out there now. It was a conscious decision for Kim and I to start a family, and it was something we both. She was not an accident. What? Like, why are they talking about that? It was a conscious decision. She, the, she was no accident. Okay. But at the same time, so it. My wife stopped taking birth control. We did it on purpose. It was such an exciting. Now she's a surfer. Fighting thing, and then she kind of came into the world in a way that we hadn't expected, I guess. 
when Quincy was born, there was several complications. Um, oh. She got rushed to the Melbourne Children's Hospital neonatal unit. I didn't know this would be ta- Aww. I didn't know this would be taking a sad turn. She was in ICU for two weeks <laughs> in Melbourne, and then we got transferred back to our local hospital, and she was in ICU for another week. We took her home. We had a home one day, and she went into what was called adrenal crisis. So we were rushed back to the emergency room, and then on and off, we spent more time in hospital for two and a half years than we spent at home. At that stage, I was still working away, so I, I took some time off to to be home and financially I had to go back to work so uh, a lot of the stuff that happened with Quincy I wasn't um, you know I kind of wasn't there for it and you know that was hard. Uh, lots and lots of testing later it was discovered that she has an adrenal insufficiency so her body doesn't create cortisone so there she has a, a, an adrenaline Insufficiency? Therefore she is steroid dependent. Can you shake that up for me? <laughs> steroid dependency at this age requires medication three times a day. Um, times of sickness needs intensive medical treatment. If I break my bone or something, you can look at my medical alert and it tells you what you can do. She's a lot more stable now. but I'm just thinking she has a, an adrenaline deficiency. Is that what they said? So like when she's tearing up those slopes, she's just chill. She's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's whatever. Maybe that helps become a prodigy surfer. Maybe it's a blessing. Maybe not. But it's through um, very, very careful monitoring from many different doctors. Jake works away a lot and Quincy got to the stage where I wasn't allowed to drive down to the beaches. I'd have to take the back roads if I needed to get anything in town um, because she'd be in tears looking at the waves that she couldn't go surfing. If I was away for three weeks and we'd come home and of course she hadn't been able to surf for, for that time I was away and the very first thing we'd do was <laughs> go find waves. We tried very many different options and then contacted surfing services and they put us onto Tony. The connection that they have is amazing. Um, I trust Tony 100% with her. I know he's going to keep her safe and Quincy's just ecstatic to be able to go out and catch waves even though her daddy's not home. Yeah, out of ten. What's that wave worth here? Me? No, no, the pen. Four, nine. I reckon maybe seven and a half. I reckon you've got more in you. Quincy uh, is an amazing human. She's like no other human I've ever met before. She has no fear and she tackles life head on every single day. My background, I spent about 10 years with Surfing Australia as their National High Performance and Coaching Director. Um, I worked with some of the best athletes in the country, ranging from uh, Owen Wright, Dion Aegis, Stephanie Gilmore. Um, now they're all elite athletes on the world stage. Quincy um, has all that potential, um, but she's got a long way to go. Quincy started skating about two to three months after she started surfing. The swell got really, really big and we just couldn't find anywhere safe for her to go out. So she actually asked... Look at those freaking knee pads, holy. Just if she would get a skateboard. We went and got a skateboard and started skating. It's crazy what kids can do if you teach them at a young age. And she's clearly got like a knack for this. I don't have a favorite out of surfing and skating. I like them the same. I want to be That's a good. pro surfer and skater. <laughs> if she chooses it as, as a profession, you know, I, I just hope it's for the right reasons and we'll support her. Hopefully she's not doing it for that millions of dollars that she's going to make. You know, I hope it's because she loves it. Not for the millions of dollars in fame. That's right. <laughs> Though the millions of dollars would be nice. Whichever way she wants to go. I definitely That's cool, you know. You don't want the old trope of like the dad forcing the child to become an actor or a skateboarder. Like from two years old. Get back on the board. Like uh Michael Jackson. Funny thing she has That's good. The ability to go all the way. If it stays fun for her, if she doesn't burn out. Um, there's a lot of things that can impact a, an athlete's ability to reach their potential. Sometimes, you know, it, it's a battle to keep her healthy. If she can wake up every day and just be happy being herself, 
whether it's surfing, skating, playing the drums, riding her bike, it doesn't matter. It's all about being happy. You know, I hope in 30 years time, we're still going on surf trips together. <laughs> Well, that was very special. It definitely took a turn there at one. You know, I was not expecting that sad portion, but that was awesome. I get, Oh, this is eight years ago. Guys, we need to do a quick search. You know, like, is she, what's she doing today? Oh, well, there she is. Oh, this is her website, Quincy Simmons. She's older here. That's good. That's good. Instagram, you click it, does nothing. That's not that's not good. <laughs> Facebook. I'm not gonna go to the Facebook. Um guys, I'm just trying to see is she a professional now? About well, I guess so. She has sponsors, right? She looks like a professional to me. Rip girl. Oh my god. Oh my. Yeah, she's got a lot of sponsors. California tacos. <laughs> she live in California now. Hmm. That's crazy. I hope she's still going. But either way, that was very neat, very cool, very fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have this channel right here linked in the description if you're interested. Oh, fun to see you guys do it, starting a reaction channel together. See, right now it's all Tyler's fans. I've been following Tyler. So, yeah, we need some representation. Have a great day, guys. Happy Arbel. I hope to see you here again tomorrow because I'll be here learning some more about Australia. Goodbye.